Hi, my name is Leah Day, and welcome to this video for the Free Motion Quilting Project. Today I'm working on Duchess Reigns, and I just felt like turning on the camera and shooting a quick video to show you how I'm working through this last section of the quilt. Um, basically, I'm stitching in the borders, and they're very big, and the stitching is very dense and very complex, uh, and I'm you know, there's a lot of things that I'm trying to have to balance with this. Part of it is the weight and bulk of this quilt. Um, it doesn't matter that I have tables set up properly for the quilt to rest on. Because it's so stiff and there's so much stitching in it already, um, it's just wanting to set still. It doesn't want to move and it doesn't want me to push it around too much. So I've been spending most of this quilt with a quilt suspended. And how I suspend my quilts, I basically just screwed um, handles, uh, just simple um, metal handles that I found at Lowe's, and those are screwed to my ceiling. And then I just simply attach a bungee cord with hooks and then a clamp. And this particular clamp, you know, it's just a squeeze clamp, very simple. And I just took a drill and uh, drilled a hole in the end of the clamp so that way I could slot my bungee cord through it and I would have a hook. So this has been absolutely essential for working on this quilt because it's big and because it's very stiff. Um, and all the thread that's going into it is making it stiffer and it just makes it much harder and harder to move smoothly and evenly on the surface of the table. And I'm not making huge movements with this quilt. I'm moving, you know, in very small amounts. I'm going to show you some quilting that I'm doing on it in just a second. Um, but even moving it in the small amounts that I am, it's a struggle simply because of the way it's quilted and how big it is. So lifting it up and getting uh, the weight up off the table so that it's suspended has been essential. And I would highly recommend setting up some kind of system like this for yourself. It doesn't have to be high. You know, you can set up, you know, even just a frame, a wooden frame with two by fours and only go up about three feet up behind your uh, sewing table and that would be perfect. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be all the way to a ceiling. I know a lot of people have vaulted ceilings or beam ceilings or whatever. You don't have to go all the way up that high. You can be creative with this and kind of build a frame around the back of your sewing machine. And the point is just simply to get the quilt suspended, kind of like a hammock. That's kind of the idea I'm going with here at least. Um, and that's been really helpful for me. So now I want to get on the machine and show you some stitching. So I'm going to have to hang the quilt in front of this camera in order to make this happen. So I'll get that done and then I'll show you what it looks like when the quilt is suspended. So all you do is just squeeze and then you grab your quilt. And here's the quilt right here behind, in front of me. And just clamp it just like that. And then I've got another one right here. And I like three clamps. Uh, I like two to the back. And then I have one that's right here to the side that works really, really well. And that clamps up the quilt. And here's the thing with this, now that you can kind of not really see me, but that's okay. Um, here's the thing with this. You need to understand when you clamp, it's going to work. Those clamps are going to be in place for about two to four inches. And then you're going to need to stop and reposition them. You're not going to clamp a quilt to the ceiling and just leave it there for the entire quilt. As you move through the area, as you rotate, as you shift it around, you're going to need to stop and reclamp. And it's not that big of a deal. You just unclamp it and clamp it somewhere that it works. You need to get into the idea of shifting and moving so that you're always comfortable. I've broken thread a lot in this quilt because I've been stubborn about okay, Leah, you need to rotate the quilt around so you're in a good optimal position to, to quilt through that area. Um, don't get lazy with it though. And I've learned my lesson. Whenever things start feeling a little awkward, whenever things start feeling um, just a little weird, I stop, shift the quilt around, find where the positioning is good, and then pull up that, the outside edges and clamp again. And it really does help. You can see how high this lifts the quilt. But down on the surface, let me position my other camera so that way you can see the other So here angle. you can see how this is lifting the quilt to the back of the machine, but it's a nice smooth curve here. Hopefully you can see it's not, you know, I'm not bringing it up super sharp against the back of the machine. And I'm able to move and shift this and it's just suspended, kind of like, kind of like a hammock. It's a real soft suspend. 
So now that you understand how I'm managing to quilt this beast on my home sewing machine, uh, let me encourage you to set up a system like this. Because if you're wanting to quilt anything bigger than a baby quilt, you know, a twin, full, queen, king, I don't care how big it is, bigger quilts present challenges in the bulk and the weight of the quilt on your table. And it doesn't matter whether you're quilting densely like this or you're quilting big and open fells. And in fact, actually, big open fills, you're needing to move that quilt very quickly. So it would actually make even more sense to clamp or suspend the quilt up behind your machine. Now, if you don't have ceilings that allow this, if you uh, don't have ceilings that are in any way close enough to hang clamps and, and suspend down with bungee cords, that's okay. You can take two by fours. And two by fours will build up like basically like a frame. Just think of it kind of like a quilt frame that you see in a quilt show. Uh, but you don't need anything more elaborate than just a two by four frame. And then you can hang hooks from that. And honestly, I'm thinking three feet up behind your machine would be plenty. If you want to go higher, you can. But it's just a simple apparatus for suspending your quilt up. So you have gravity working for you rather than against you. So I really think that this is essential. I think that we should sell kits of these or something. I don't really know how to put something like that together, but I think that it's one of those things that is going to make an enormous difference for your sewing room. So I would encourage you to at least check it out. I think all told, um, the handles screwed to the ceiling that I've got, the bungee cords and the clamps, I think all told it was like 20 bucks. You can go to the hardware store and set it up and uh, get everything that you need and then screw it to the ceiling and get it all working in about five minutes. So it's not intimidating. Don't be scared of it. Just go figure it out and see if it's going to work for you. So now let's get on the machine. Now that I've rambled a lot about <laughs> hanging your quilt, let me get on the machine and show you some of the stitching and show you some of the issues that I've struggled with with this quilt and how I'm so dealing with here it. Here I am in the border of the quilt and this is just a good example of one of the feathers that I'm working on. And basically how this is designed is um, I've got this outer line and I've got my feather and I want to quilt, uh, kind of outline each feather and then I want to fill with white thread. I want to fill that and thread paint all the area around it. Now this is background right here and you can see it's a little puffy. It's a little um, wiggly wobbly and I'm going to have to deal with that puffiness and excess fabric as I work through this area. So let me do some thread painting first through here and then I'll do some filling and show you how to deal with some of this excess fabric next. Okay, so I'm working on these feathers, and it's basically just a simple process of uh, travel stitching along what was previously stitched. And you really kind of get into a flow with this. It's a lot of repetitive movements. And so usually I'll do about five feathers at a time, just kind of tracing back along it. And in this situation, I am not at all afraid of thread play, uh, thread building up on the surface of the quilt. I want that. That is how this quilt is designed. The one thing I do want to be careful of, I don't want to stitch in the same place for too many times because that'll usually create a noticeable little glob of thread, and I don't like that. So I'm trying to keep moving, but at the same time, you can probably hear how slowly my needle is going up and down, how little uh, gas I'm giving my machine, because I want to make sure that I'm still getting a nice stitch, but not too small and not too big. So that little area is done, and now I'm going to kind of trace back and around along that outline. And I'm just kind of going back and forth to start building up the thread here. And every once in a while I'll come back trace along a feather and then come forward. Now here's the one thing with clamps as you feel as you pull down like right here I'm feeling like that is too poofy it's, it's kind of pulling the quilt backwards on me so I need to readjust my clamp. Readjusting these clamps is really really important. You're not going to clamp the quilt and just leave it in one position forever. You're going to have to continually move and shift uh, the clamps as you work through any area. And here I only moved about an inch and I'm needing to re-clamp again. 
So understand that this is a nice system, but you are going to have to fiddle with it. It's not like you're going to clamp your quilt and quilt throw the whole thing like a speed demon. You're going to have to shift around and certainly reclamp as needed. Okay, so that feels a lot better. You can see the quilt isn't poofing up as much behind me. And now I'm going to start working through the stem the same way. I'm just going back and forth. It's very careful, very patient stitching. It's been very slow. I don't get very much done in two hours, and that's what's frustrating. But at the same time, there is some progress being made every day. You can see this is just a back and forth kind of movement. I'm just basically just focusing on turning that area white and not seeing any red poking through. So let me back up just a bit and you can see like if I left that little line you know, of red still showing, I'll go back in there and make sure that it's filled completely. And now, again, go back to tracing along a feather. Kind of always switching between tracing along the feathers, filling in the stem, and filling in the outer section of the feather. And it's really easy, I've done this several times actually, it's really easy to accidentally chop a feather in half, but because there's so much thread painting, you can kind of get away with that. And let me just show you an example of what I mean. I'm going to trace back around here and just kind of pretend that I cut this one in half. I don't like how big it's looking anyway, so let's just say I, I accidentally stitched that. And I'm just going to build up the thread down along the edge of the feather and come around and I'm going to keep building up and just make that the new correct line. It's as simple as that. And I can fill in all that red with white with more thread. So it's really very simple. You know, there's, there's really no way of making a big mistake. Um, thread breaks are a little tricky because, of course, with this much dense stitching, it's very high, hard to hide a thread break. So if I was going to break thread right here, I'd want to come uh, to the outer edge of this feather and break thread over here, so then I would have a chance of hiding it inside the middle layer of the quilt. Okay, so that's looking pretty good to me. Of course, it needs a lot more work, but that's about as much as I can show of thread painting on a video. Let me trace back and I'll show you my fill. I've got this little pocket right here, and this little pocket needs to be filled with this sharp stippling design. So the first thing I'm gonna do is kind of trace along this line, because this is a dividing line right here between one background fill and another. And then I'll also trace up here, so that way I have a nice, nice edge. I know exactly what space I'm going to be filling. That's gonna be thread painted too. All right, and now at this point, I kind of take a look at what I'm dealing with here and grab a seam ripper so that way I can kind of play with the fabric. I have a lot of excess. I've got a lot of bagginess here. You can see me kind of pulling on it, uh, just sliding my seam ripper. I'm not trying to rip the fabric. I'm just trying to slide and smush uh, the fabric up. And then I can take my finger and drag it backwards, and I end up with a little pleat. Now, I would normally never say, oh, just go ahead and stitch that pleat into your quilt. But with this particular quilt, it has been such a beast with excess fabric and poofiness like this that I am actually going to stitch this pleat down so it is completely smushed over and encased by my filler stitching. So here we go. I'm going to actually get started. And this is just sharp stippling. I'm just wiggling around and coming to sharp points. I'm tracing over that issue and it might it might shift position on me depending on the way that you stitch it you can see I was kind of stitching over the top of it it kind of ended up smushing out so it's not a noticeable pleat but the filler stitching is still consistent with everything else that's been in the quilt and you cannot see like that has now smushed out and it's flat that stitching, that, that fabric area is now flat, and that's really what we want. Okay, the other design that I've been stitching is boomerangs. 
and that's a lot easier to hide thread mistakes because there's a lot more layers of threads, a stacking design, and I can really just kind of steamroll in here, and I don't care how poofy it is, I'm just going to add thread on top of it until it lays down and does what I want. <laughs> so here we go. And basically you're just breaking the space up into triangles and then filling those triangles back and forth. There's really two ways of forming that design. You can form the triangles, you know, start small and then start building up the triangle. Or you can go on ahead and start with the outer edge and form from there. Now again, I'm getting another little pleat here. That's okay. I'm just going to kind of take my seam ripper and mush this way. Try and bring all the fabric into one spot. And a lot of times, if it's really a big pleat, I'll take a needle, a little pen, and go on ahead and pen that down in place so that as I stitch over it, it is a lot easier to stay in place and it's not gonna, it's not gonna move on me. That pleat's gonna get covered up now with stitching. So the easiest way to do it is just gonna go on ahead and stitch out some triangles on top of it so it holds in place. And now I just fill up those triangles with repeated lines of anchor quilting. those things this is almost thread painting in itself and I've had to be careful to watch my scale because I'm getting a really really dense with the boomerangs but I want it to look very you know I still want this to look very much like a filler design and not thread painting so I sometimes have to remind myself okay Leah keep it open <laughs> don't get it quite so dense back along and that way you can see that's what we filled we've got some sharp stippling we've got some boomerangs and we've also got this beautiful thread painted feather ready to go so that's it for this video I hope that you've enjoyed seeing Duchess Reigns and watching how this area is being quilted and specifically some of the issues that are going on inside of it I am NOT a perfect quilter and I never will be I made mistakes on this quilt. Um, I think it was in the dyeing process. You know, I, I created this whole cloth as a white quilt and then dyed it red. Uh, and I think that dyeing process is what created the baggy and puffy fabric that I'm dealing with now that I'm having to sort out by intentionally forming pleats and stitching over them to secure them and flatten them out. A year ago, would I have seen that as a viable option for sorting out an issue? I don't know. Probably I would have been very paralyzed by the idea that a quilt could have this big of an issue in it. You know, I'm, I'm supposed to be good at this. <laughs> so uh, nowadays though, I understand that a quilt cannot be perfect. It absolutely can't be perfect. And I don't expect it to be perfect. And that these issues, I'm hiding them. And I doubt anyone could see them. I see them, but I doubt anyone else could. Um, and it's, it's really been for me a challenge to say, okay, there are issues, but it is still good enough. And it's still beautiful. And it's still gorgeous. And it's still going to be an amazing quilt to show and share. But the mistakes and the issues are something that they are a challenge to overcome, not a challenge to be paralyzed by and to throw the quilt in the trash and say, I failed. So I hope that encourages you you've got a quilt that has issues to understand that everyone has issues with quilts and it is the process of adding more fiber adding more thread adding more fabric whatever you got to do to finish it and make it beautiful so my name is Leah Day and this has been a video for the free motion quilting project you can find hundreds of videos on free motion quilting and many videos on the creation of this particular quilt Duchess Reigns 
Find all of that and more at freemotionproject.com. Until next time, let's go quilt.